Dubai is often seen as the one and only gold standard for high-status would-be global citizens who want to eliminate their tax bill. And yet there are other options that offer many of the things that Dubai can give you. Today, we're going to compare Dubai to four other high-level places. We're going to assume for purposes of this episode that you are interested in moving to Dubai because you would like to eliminate your tax bill. Now, that does not apply to everybody. And while international entrepreneurs, uh, many types of investors, people who are doing business across borders will often benefit from living in the UAE. People with certain royalty income or who need a tax treaty or a certain kind of dividend income. There may be other places to live where you could actually reduce your taxes further than the UAE. But if you are looking for uh, a vibrant, up and coming, bustling place that has people from all over the world, certainly Dubai meets that criteria and they have no personal income tax. You do have a new tax coming on mainland corporations in the UAE, but on the free zones, there is no such tax. And so for a lot of folks who are watching this, who are doing business internationally, you can move there and basically pay zero. And yet, what are the other reasons people are interested in Dubai? They're interested because the Ubers are Lexuses. They're interested because there's lots of good restaurants. There's, they're interested because there's a very international community of folks from around the world. Wherever you're from, you're gonna find people who are like you. It's just a sexy place to be. It has been marketed to that. But I believe it's also uh, gotten this to where it is because people don't understand that there are other tax systems that you can take advantage of to pay, whether it's zero uh, or whether it is close to zero uh, in other places. They also don't understand that just because Dubai doesn't have any tax doesn't mean if you're earning income from other places that that may not be taxed. And so I'm Andrew Henderson, the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We have spent the last 10 years helping over a thousand high net worth clients from around the world create and execute holistic plans to reduce their taxes, increase their options with things like second citizenship, and grow their opportunities overseas. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And so the holistic approach to this is very important. Depending on where your income comes from, you may not get the best deal in the UAE. But let's just assume uh, that you are going to pay zero tax in the UAE and that whole uh, you know, fast-paced lifestyle is what you're looking for. Uh, one thing people also say is, I don't want to move overseas to somewhere where I, I can't speak English. So let's stay in Asia and let's look at other places where you can go and get the same kind of experience or at least same, some of the same parts as you would in Dubai. And so in the Gulf, certainly Dubai is the gold standard in that region. Abu Dhabi, for some folks, is uh, interesting. Uh, it is certainly where more of the old money in the UAE is. And so that's the same country. Once you're in the UAE, you can move Dubai, Abu Dhabi, anywhere you want in the country. Elsewhere in the Gulf, very safe region, by the way, all very tax friendly, is Bahrain. They have a real estate investment visa and you can, you can pay zero tax there. It's one of the more liberal countries in the region. And so if you wanted to buy a property, put some money in the bank, you can get residence. None of these countries, generally speaking, the UAE started to a little bit, but generally speaking, you're not gonna get citizenship in any of the Gulf countries. And so if you want a place that is much more laid back, not as much to do, uh, there's certainly ne not nearly as much to do in Bahrain, but if you're looking to be out of the spotlight, that's one place in the region that you can go that's not so far away. You can pop into Dubai whenever you want, it's a one hour flight. Elsewhere in Asia, you certainly have Singapore, although that, for the same kind of person who's often looking to go to Dubai, Singapore is going to cost a lot more because they're going to want you to move your business there. They're going to have limitations on bringing your family in some cases. They have opened up certain kind of high value employees, but there are uh, just a number of limitations in Singapore. It is difficult because they don't really need people that badly. They are looking at certain kinds of people, but for entrepreneurs who want to come and pay very little tax, that's going to be harder to get in. You have to commit a lot more to, to get into Singapore. And so we'll skip that. Uh, next door in Malaysia, I've spent many years in Kuala Lumpur, and I would argue that if you're looking for good English, you will find better English spoken in Kuala Lumpur. You compare the Pavilion Mall, the Surya KLCC Mall, and the Petronas Towers to, let's say, the, uh, the Dubai Mall. You're going to be understood more in Kuala Lumpur. You can have the same multicultural uh, approach more from people within the country. There's not as many expats at this point. And so if you're looking to meet uh, you know, other Australians or other um, British folks, there's not that many Americans in Dubai, quite frankly. But you're not gonna meet maybe as many expats. Although people have this impression that Dubai is nothing but expats. If you are from the UK, US, Australia, most of the expats aren't where you're from. Nothing wrong with that, it's great cultural vibrance, but if you're thinking you're gonna meet like a ton of other Americans, that's not necessarily true. You're gonna meet people who are from all around the world. And so Kuala Lumpur, you're gonna have somewhat similar experience. 
Uh, yeah, the, the taxis, the Grab cars are not Lexuses, although you can get the same car that Diplomats use. You can just pay a little bit more and you can get that car. It's going to be a lot less expensive. You have the MM2H Visa program. You have now the VIP program. So if you've got a couple hundred thousand dollars to put in the bank, this is probably for an entrepreneur who wants to take advantage of Malaysia's territorial tax system. There's been a lot of confusion, a lot of talk about what Malaysia's tax system is going to be in the coming years. Even if Malaysia take some of the worst steps they've been talking about in their tax system, it's still going to be a very low tax place for someone who's a high earner to come and live if they move to a sort of remittance-based tax system, which they haven't done yet. They've talked about and they've kind of gone back and forth. Uh, but if you have six figures to put in the bank and you don't mind tying up an opportunity cost, you will, I think, get that opportunity cost back and more in terms of the lower cost of living. You are closer to a lot of other places in Asia. Uh, you are closer to certainly the world's preeminent wealth hub, in my opinion, Singapore. Uh, and so certainly further from Europe, if that's where you are from and you want to go back to. Uh, but I think Kuala Lumpur definitely stands up. It doesn't have the same sex appeal or cachet. But it's a very open place. It's multicultural. And uh, I think if you have that money to deposit, it's going to cost you more out of pocket in terms of the investment than just setting up a company in the UAE in the free zone, which will get you your residence permit. But again, I think you can make that opportunity cost back. Uh, elsewhere, if you want to be in Europe, let's say you're from Europe, you like that environment. I think people often write off Europe uh, because they say, oh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's too high tax. And so Milan in Italy, for example, is a place that you wouldn't expect to be low tax. But if you haven't lived in Italy any time recently, you can take advantage of a number of different deals. And so if you're the kind of person who wants to live in uh, the UAE, if you want to live in Dubai, uh, then Milan offers some of those same kind of things. The English is not going to be as good. Uh, the service is not going to be as good or as pleasant as you would find in, let's say, Malaysia. Uh, you are going to have a different vibe of not just having, you know, the big, huge indoor malls. It's certainly have outdoor shopping plazas. So it's, it's what Europe, it's what Italy has to offer. But I think the same kind of person who'd be interested in Dubai would be interested in Milan. You can pay 100,000 euro flat tax for well over a decade. And so you're not paying zero. And certainly real estate there is one of the most expensive cities uh, really anywhere in the world. Dubai has pretty much doubled in price in the last 18 months, but Milan has always been very expensive. So you're not coming to save any money, but the good news is whether you want to get Italy's version of a golden visa, whether you want to get one of the self-sufficient visas that Italy has to offer, you can basically move to Italy, same as you can move to the UAE, uh, not by setting up a company in this case, because if you're using the lump sum, you'd want your company to be somewhere else, somewhere else perhaps like the UAE or any number of other places, since Italy is more flexible than, let's say, Portugal on uh, where you can incorporate your company if you're on one of their tax incentives. Uh, and so Milan, I think, offers, again, a lot of those benefits. You can actually work towards citizenship. It is not the fastest citizenship in Europe if you're not already European, in which case, of course, if you're European, you can just move there without really doing much. But if you want to work towards a, a top quality citizenship, let's say you're American, uh, it may be beneficial to say, I'm going to incorporate in the UAE. Uh, I'm going to live in Italy. I'm going to pay this lump sum tax. There are actually some benefits for Americans to kind of get that lump sum tax back. And so this is where the holistic planning that we do comes into play. You don't just want to move to Italy, get their 100,000 euro tax deal, and then incorporate your company there. The benefit of Italy is they're more flexible on where you can, can incorporate. And so not only do I think Milan offers more of the the Dubai type prestige than let's say Lisbon where they have the NHR program, but Italy's lump sum tax program works much better. I would say Switzerland, which is a similar program, much more expensive version, but I think you know definitely different animals between wanting to live in Geneva or Lucerne or Niedwalden versus wanting to live in Dubai, whereas I think Milan much more lives up to that. Uh, the other place that could work, being very international, being excellent in English, perhaps doesn't bring quite the prestige, but brings a certain kind of I think European charm is Dublin, Ireland. They have a uh, remittance-based tax incentive for foreigners. And so you're not going to pay zero in Italy. You're not going to pay zero in Ireland. You're not going to pay zero really anywhere in Europe outside of Monaco. Uh, and so uh, you could go and live in Dublin. And if you, you're not getting the warm weather, and yet how many people live, they leave Dubai for five months a year, barely qualifying for tax residence in the UAE uh, because it's too hot. And so you have the reverse problem in Dublin. So you could spend your winters somewhere else. You could be based uh, in Dublin. You have a very international community, excellent English. And so it may not bring some of the same cachet in the same ways, uh, but it's become very uh, developed in a sense. You know, Dubai, people think it's much bigger than what it is. And so 
you have people moving to Ireland from all over. You have the big tech scene in Europe, very international community. Again, if you're already European, you don't need to worry about how to get there. But uh, you have, similar to uh, uh, the UAE, you can set up your company in Ireland and you can be employed there. Uh, but you don't have to keep your entire company in Ireland. So if you have a company, again, already in the UAE, the Cayman Islands, what have you, you can use that as part of your structure. Uh, and so those are four places that you can consider. You could also uh, consider adding Monaco. What, the reason I wouldn't add Monaco to that list, even though it has many similarities to Dubai, is that everyone young that I've taken to Monaco over the years just eventually says, I, I feel uh, too constricted. And people are tempted to go and spend a bunch of time in France. And it's kind of like people who want to move to Puerto Rico as Americans, uh, where they, they think like, oh, I'll just pretend I'm living in Puerto Rico. I'll pretend I'm living in Monaco. Uh, they're pretty smart about that in Monaco. And so Monaco could be uh, a fifth one on that list. But I think a lot of folks that we've seen, um, much for the same reasons they don't perhaps want to live in Switzerland. They just want to be bouncing around places that are more vibrant. So uh, you've got Bahrain, probably not a place that's going to match up as much, but you've got a lot of the same things that Dubai has minus some of the sex appeal. You have Kuala Lumpur, which I believe has just as many consumer conveniences or close to it. Um, a little bit nicer you know, culture, better English, better proximity to many places in Asia. You've got Milan, which has the same sex appeal with a great tax deal. Not quite as good as Dubai's, but you can work towards citizenship in return. You've got Dublin. Uh, and then, of course, we mentioned Monaco, Singapore, Switzerland. Those could work as well, although they are certainly different. And so before you think, hey, I have to go live in Dubai to pay zero tax, realize there are places in Europe, in Asia, where maybe you're paying zero dollars uh, or ten thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or euros. But if you are making good money, then you can take advantage of creating the more holistic plan. Dubai works right out of the box, not as well for Americans. Uh, but Dubai is, okay, I'm going to move my company there and I'm going to live there. The holistic planning that we do for the folks we help is figuring out how do you move your company out of the country that it's in right now and into a tax favorable jurisdiction. In almost any of the aforementioned countries, the company could be in the UAE. It could be in a free zone. It could be in some other tax free country, but you don't necessarily have to be there. You might avail yourself of a residence permit in the UAE and come uh, a couple of days a year to keep that active have your banking for your business in the UAE uh, and go from there. However, uh, that doesn't mean you have to live there. And so I think that what people often try and do is put everything into one neat little box, find one solution that solves every problem. If you don't need a second citizenship, then that's an extra point for Dubai. But I can tell you as someone who likes uh, you know, spoken English, who likes um, you know, a number of different things, I don't know that Dubai offers all those. It's a, it's a fun place, it's a vibrant place. A lot of folks go there and they're just like, oh, is, it, is this for me? So you want to evaluate all your options. That's what we help people uh, do all the time is look at, hey, you could do this instead. Hey, you could do this instead. And most people don't realize some of the places we talked about can actually be pretty affordable.